Hi, and welcome back to Jen and Dan's Natural Healing with Plants. I am Jen, and I'm here with Dan. And today we're talking about the sugar season, aka flu season. So is it a coincidence that flu season just happens to be during <laughs> sugar season? How are you this week, Dan? I'm doing good, Jennifer. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. What are your thoughts on this? Oh, I don't think, I think it probably is correlated because when the holidays hit, you know, you have Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and what are most of us doing? We're feasting on foods that are not good for us. <laughs> and so a lot of these foods do cause inflammation in the body. They can disrupt our hormones, our immune system. And so I, I really do think there's a correlation there. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I think flu season is definitely has more to do with how we're eating during this time of year than, than anything else. Yeah. So what do you do when people say, but it's Halloween, you can't not have the candy. Oh, well, that's a tough one because, <laughs> well, I say you can make healthier alternatives. You can make really tasty desserts at your own home with natural ingredients and you mm -hmm. can use healthier sweeteners. You can you know, use honey or like you like to use monk fruit. I see. I use monk fruit a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Not the white powdered monk fruit people. Please stop buying highly processed monk fruit. Yeah. So which one do you use? Mine's a monk fruit extract. It comes in a powder ah. form, but it's the extract. Just like we buy herbal extracts. That's what this is. It's brown. It's not pretty white. It is brown. Or I'll use stevia leaves, which are green. If you are buying stevia that is clear or white, that's highly processed. You can buy the leaves. You can buy the powder from the leaves. You can even make your own extracts or buy an extract. And now those may be clear. My extract is green. And so I don't know how they make the clear ones when mine's green. Yeah, well, yeah I think it's probably highly processed. There's probably also, I, I don't know for a fact, but there's probably also some healthier candy alternatives on the market, I, I guess. There probably I mean, I are. Seen, probably yeah. are. I'm sure but like seen. I make, I make turtles. I make my own Snickers. Oh. I yeah. make my own Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah. So yeah. there are ways to do it where it's not going to be giving you blood sugar spikes and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I, I said, well, if you're really concerned about your health, you should start to make your own. Yes. Because if your I mean, health you is your priority, eating. you cannot eat the Thanksgiving candy. I mean, the Halloween candy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Gotta okay. So, summer straight, you know? That's right. So Thanksgiving and Christmas are coming up. In our family, we usually eat pretty much the same kind of foods for both Thanksgiving and Christmas. We overeat. We have uh, lots of snacks. Uh, highly refined processed snacks. I'm talking about in my family, not in my house. Um, and they highly processed snacks, um, lots of desserts, lots of sugar, and then lots of casseroles and lots of meat and dairy, lots of meat and dairy, lots of gluten, gluten and snacks, meals and dessert. Right. Yeah. Well, the holidays, ever since I became plant-based, the holidays have been weird ever since. Some of the fam some of my family members on my wife's side, I can tell that they've been mad at us ever since we went plant-based. <laughs> it's like we it's like we uh committed a, a, a sin or something. I'm like, really? Right. Right. You're breaking tradition. Yeah, it's something else. it's crazy, isn't right. it? It's like a yes. I don't know. And then, so when you do have your Thanksgiving and your Christmas, I know for me, I bring foods to share with everyone, of course, that are delicious and meet my guidelines. And then that's all I eat. I only bring the, I only eat the foods that I bring. Yeah. Um, but I do bring a lot of food, which can be hard for people, right? Um, but I noticed most of my food's gone. So everybody eats it. They're eating gluten-free vegan. They don't even know they're eating gluten-free vegan, right? Or even grain-free exactly. vegan in some cases. Yes. And so it's definitely possible. And then the rest of the year goes along and we stay healthy and no one else does. And so is it is it the food? Is it coincidence? You know, what is it? 
I tend to think it's the food. I think that you know, we're eating healthy. We're eating healthy before the holidays. We're eating healthy during the holidays. Am I saying we completely avoid sugar and all of that? For me, I absolutely avoid gluten and corn, which corn is really hard at Thanksgiving, um, just because I know I will have an autoimmune flare if I eat those. So I absolutely do not have those. Um, but I will probably have something with sugar in it if it's gluten-free, vegan, but it does have sugar over the holidays if I'm not sick then I will, I will eat those foods. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're always healthy, eat healthy, like you and I do mm -hmm. having a little bit of sugar here and there is not going to kill you. But see the problem with a lot of people though, is if they eat sugar, they get a craving right? and then, and they, then they could go on a binge, you know? Yeah. And then the next week they're eating more sugar and the next week they're eating more sugar and just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So you have to be honest with yourself. If you're one of those right. people, you may not want to eat sugar at all yeah. until you, you really get more this? of a, yeah, yeah. Right. And I'm like you, I do bring my own food. If we go to family's house mm -hmm. and they always eat my food and they love my food. And it's like, see, we can't coexist. You can have <laughs> your turkey and I can have my chickpea cutlets. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> I made those last year. They were pretty good, actually. It sounds good. Yeah. So, yeah. what? How are sugar? How is sugar connected to flu? Well, a lot. Of, if you eat a lot of this sugar, it actually can cause inflammation in your body. It can. It makes your blood sugar erratic. It basically throws you out of homeostasis. Homeostasis. We talk about keeping your body in a stable state of health. So right. this is going to affect immune system works uh, you probably know more in depth on it than i do but but yeah so it creates inflammation in the body you know the sugar so you think about what are what do sugar crystals look like have you ever grown sugar crystals or made rock candy or bought rock candy i mean it's got sharp edges it's rough right and so think about that running through your veins you know oh. and so that alone that's going to be causing some issues for you um, but anytime you have a sugar spike, it creates some inflammation. And then you have some um, different things going on when you ever have inflammation. Then we have some cortisol that increases. And if we do that chronically over time, that's going to um, start creating an immune issue. Your body is like, wait a minute, am I helping with the inflammation over here? Or am I fighting this virus coming in? You know, it just starts getting spread too thin. I've got to repair all the damage from the sugar, but I also need to be protecting you from whatever is invading you at the time. Remember, we can't see viruses and um, and things like that. That's why we don't, a mask doesn't do you any good, you know, because I can see, you know, if I wear a mask, I can see the holes on the mask. <laughs> I can't see the virus. I can't see the, the bacteria, right? And so it's the same kind of thing. But our body is trying to manage all of those things. We don't know they're all coming in, but they are. We're exposed to things all the time, unless you're living in a completely sterile environment 24 seven, maybe you're not being exposed to those things, but I want my body to be protecting me from those things, the pathogens, then instead of sugar, I can control the sugar. I can control that part. Anyway, I went on the tangent. So Anyway, when you eat the sugar, it can create inflammation in your body, especially when you have the spikes and the falls. Um, that means your body's not managing it well. And anytime blood sugar is out of balance, hormones get out of balance. So that's one of the main things to be healthy. You have to have your blood sugar in balance. And so like, if you have an autoimmune disease, number one, get your blood sugar in balance. You have cancer, number one, get your blood sugar in balance. You have heart disease, number one, get your blood sugar in balance. We have to look and get rid of those sugars that anything with added sugars, cakes, cookies, pastries, processed flours, crackers, noodles, you know, all of those things. We gotta we gotta get them out of the diet. And when we have talk about the holidays, that a lot of those things are what, you know, macaroni and cheese, that is death on a plate. <laughs> Yeah, I see some of the worst dishes of the year on the Thanksgiving table. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow, you know? Right. Right. Yes. So if we are, so we're going into the season. Now, when this 
goes out, when this podcast goes out, it might be outside of the season. But as we start thinking about other seasons or even if it's at later and we have Valentine's Day and things like that, what can we do to boost our immune system as we go into these seasons? Well, we definitely want to eat our clean whole foods, our fruits and our vegetables. And of course, I say you need to keep exercising. Even if you don't want to exercise as hard, go for a walk every day out in the sun, get some fresh air. You want to make sure you're sleeping. I mean, it's, a lot of people may lose sleep during the holidays, but it actually weakens your immune system. And of course, there's a lot of herbs that we incorporate too. I always use herbs, but we can use immune boosting herbs like echinacea or even garlic. Garlic's an immune booster. Mm -hmm. And that could be some of our, our holiday dishes. Uh, what are some things you'd try, Jennifer? Uh, yeah, those same things. Echinacea, elderberry, astragalus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those herbs, staying well hydrated. I love that you mentioned sleep because we tend to go to parties out late, but not drinking the alcohol. You know, find um, non-alcoholic drinks that you can enjoy that are sugar-free um, while you're there. Don't, no alcohol. Avoid the alcohol, avoid the sugar, make sure you're not staying out too late, getting appropriate sleep. Spending time with friends and family, that is what is really important. M moving your body every day. And I just thought of something. Some people, it's very stressful to spend time with their families during well, the that's holiday. That's true, too. <laughs> Setting those boundaries then. Yes, if going yeah. <laughs> and, yes, if having Thanksgiving just causes anxiety, completely stresses you out, what part of that is stressing you out? Let's remove it. Nobody says you have to keep doing the same thing because that's the way it's always been done. And yeah. yes, if you decide not to go, yes, they're going to be missing you and they're going to make you feel guilty, but you have to do what's right for you. I agree. I mean, yeah. and my family here, it's like every year, it's, I feel like a, uh, a strain. There's like something... So this year, I think that we're not even going to eat with her mother because <laughs> there's there's been a strain every year. And her mother made that decision. She actually is going to go to Atlanta this year to eat with her son. But uh, anyway, my point is, if you have a family member that you have a problem with and they stress you and they're always picking at you, you can either avoid them or try to talk to them about it, you know? Right, right. Luckily, in our family... Well, like I said, I always bring my own food, but I've, I've always had to do that. But now, like in my husband's family, everyone's trying to do gluten-free now. And so they're oh, not wow. all vegan, but there's a lot more vegan and a lot more gluten-free. I won't say everyone because that's, that's not true because I have a nephew who makes rolls and stuff like that. So there will be some gluten, but most people are trying to eat gluten-free and a lot are even eating vegan now. Um, I think it is becoming a little more popular. And so we do yeah. tend to have more choices when we eat together. Um, and then in, in my family, everybody likes vegetables. And it's so easy to make, you know, side dishes. And it doesn't have to be about the meat. You don't have, you can eat the sides and not the meat. Just make the sides the way you want to make them. Yeah, don't include the cream of mushroom condensed soup <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's a good point i mean we eat a lot of sides it's basically what our meals are made of but these sides are amazing yeah and really thanksgiving if you think about the thanksgiving table a lot of the dishes are mostly plant-based i mean you're you know you're dressing for your you can leave the chicken or turkey out and then you're just left with cornbread of course some people can't i think some cornbread has gluten, but you can make it gluten-free. You can make it gluten-free. Yes. Um, yeah. Before I realized I couldn't have corn, then I did make some that was gluten-free. Yeah. 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 And so I really like that. So the whole food, lots of whole foods, healthy fats, no fried foods. Yeah. Yeah. Making your own meal, side dishes, making your own healthy desserts and things like that. Those are really, those are really great. Um, as far as the food goes yeah I remember one year we made our own cranberry sauce and it was amazing I got this recipe instead uh -huh. of, you know the store it's in the can it's like weird you, you you 
poured out of a can. It's like got the can intentions on it. I don't know. <laughs> My oldest, that's that's what has to be on the table. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. You slice it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like cranberry yeah, jello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, so it's funny that so many people think that don't notice, you know, it's sugar season and then it's flu season normally, but I think it is a breakdown. It's just a breakdown in what we're eating and how we're nourishing our bodies and how we're living during these, this couple of months. And I, I know you, you had a statistic before we got on the call about how much weight people gain, you know, people they're eating unhealthy, they're gaining weight. And then all of a sudden they're getting sick and they're having the flu and so forth. It's an endless cycle. I used to work at the YMCA and every year we would have in January, the people that would sign up new year's resolutioners, we'd call them and they would last for two weeks. And that would, that would, that was it. Yep. So they're saying every year during the holidays, most Americans gain five to 10 pounds of body fat. It's not muscle. I can assure you. <laughs> so but every but the year goes by and they they don't lose the weight and then the next holidays come around they gain another five or ten pounds before you know it you're really overweight you know right. so this is another thing you have to think about a lot of people say well I'm gaining weight because I'm getting older and it may be true somewhat because your metabolism does get slower but it's also the holidays think about the holidays we get undisciplined we eat whatever we want to maybe we slack off on our exercise routine and look. You can still enjoy your holidays and be a little more mindful, you know. Mm -hmm. Not saying not to enjoy it. It's just, do you really want to gain 10 pounds? No, <laughs> no. Eat healthy around those other meals and then eat as healthy as you can when you're at those meals. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's the yeah. beauty of going plant-based is me and Jennifer have been doing it for so long. We learn how to make things taste really good, but it's still healthy. So you get the best of both worlds. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, you know, I even have a plant-based party foods, an ebook on my uh, website. So if you go to holisticgen.com, you can download that. It's a free recipe guide of gluten-free vegan recipes that are delicious and fun to make and perfect for the holidays. Oh, yeah. She's got a lot of good recipes. You got to check it out. And there's so many recipes for vegan now, like Jennifer was saying, this lifestyle is becoming more, um, a little more popular now. So there's so many more recipes and books and there's websites. You can go like, there's all kind of great vegan websites. I say vegan, but we're plant-based, but this is kind of the same thing. You want to look for plant-based vegan, which means you're eating most of your foods and vegetables, fruits, whole grains, things like that. Produce, not, not the produce Oreos. section. Yes. yes, yes, not the Oreo yeah. section. I know, mm -hmm. I know vegans and they live on Oreos and potato chips, and that's going to make you just as sick as eating meat. So, you know, right, right, <laughs> right. Um, Dr. Rita Marie has a saying nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. So, if you are, you know, just became healthy, which you know how fabulous you feel when you are healthy. Um, then you want, it makes it so much easier not to eat those other foods. When you don't realize how good you feel, then it's easy to slide. And then I mean, you just don't know that you could feel so much better and have so much more energy if you eat these healthier foods and exactly. it's protecting your body. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about here. A lot of people correlate. You might be hearing us and saying, you know, don't have any fun this year. Don't eat bad food. Don't, you know, all that but no, what we're really trying to say is if you commit to a healthy lifestyle and you start to feel good and you have good health, you can make a life that you've always dreamed about having. If you have energy, you could say there's probably something you always want to do. Do you want a new career? Do you want to go back to school? Do you want to have children? Those are things that really matter in life, not a piece of chocolate cake. If you're, if you're living your life based around food, you're not really satisfied with your life. Right, so. right. Well, and then what about it's only one day? Well, like I said before, that one day could turn into, see, it's cravings, you know, cravings. Mm -hmm. I used to do this. I used to have cheat days mm -hmm. and it would turn into cheat weeks. Yep. Me too. Me too. 
Yeah. And you know, as well as I do, one day can inflame the body. And if you're already inflamed. Yeah. You just have to get away from that. I think me and Jennifer used to, because we're, we have a gym background, both of us. And back in those days, we'd, you know, eat clean for a, a five or six days and have a cheat day. And that's the way it used to be. And I figured out that's not going to work because that can turn into a whole week. So you need to learn to eat healthy all the time, but it doesn't have to be bland. It can be really good. Mm-hmm. So that's what it took me a lot of years to figure this one out. <laughs> but you have to learn how to cook healthy and even have your desserts be healthy. And that way, you're never eating anything that's bad for you. And you don't have to worry about gaining weight because losing weight is a pain in the butt, you know? Right. And you don't want to undo all the hard work you spent, you know, staying healthy and everything, right? You don't want to undo that. You don't want to cause any flares if you have an underlying autoimmune condition. You just, you don't want that little trigger that uh, you don't know what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, I think this was a good episode and hopefully people realize um, how important it is to eat healthy to protect yourself um, for the flu. Yeah. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Because getting the flu sucks, right? I mean, I haven't, (laughs) I'm not too my own horn, but I haven't been sick. I think I got sick when the whole COVID thing was going around, but before that I'd never get sick anymore. Like, it has mm-hmm. to be the way I'm eating and the way I exercise and I sleep. I make sure I get to bed. And I mean, you don't have to be sick. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, mm-hmm. you could be yeah. so much healthier than you are now. When you take care of your body like this, then it really it makes such a huge difference. Because um, I used to, I used to get sick. And, but the la- I got sick in 2009. I was really sick with the flu in 2009. And I got really sick January of 2020. And my doctor said, you know, it was something strange going on with a bad cough. I'd never tested positive for anything. Um, But I mean, that's crazy. So 2009 and 2013, I mean, 2020, 2009 and 2020 are the two times that I've been sick that I can, I mean, that's crazy. You know how many people can say that? Yeah. And you got over it really quick in 2020. I, I didn't, I, I didn't actually, it lasted like three weeks. Yeah. But your body was that strong to, to survive it. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. But I was really during sick. all that. Yeah. You know, a lot and of people that were unhealthy did die from what was yes. going on back then. So. Right. And it could have been that, but it was before the shutdowns and all that. Cause it was in January and you know, yeah. I just went to the doctor and it was like, I just can't get rid of this cough. And she said, there's just this cough that's going around. It's different this year. <laughs> and so <laughs> I have a feeling I know what it was, but yeah. 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 I think it's a good episode. I, I hope we didn't make people feel like we're party poopers. We're not. <laughs> we're trying no. to help people we be healthier. Recipe ideas for you and more information for you as well. Yes. Yes. You can still Come. feast. You can still yes. feast on healthy food. We eat lots, lots, lots oh, of food. Yeah. Oh, I ate more than most people. Beautiful, delicious, healthy food. Yes. Yes. For a beautiful life. That's right. Yes. Well, comment in the sh- read the show notes. Comment. Let us know what you like about this episode. Let us know what you don't like about this episode. Let us know what you would like to hear. We love to hear from you. And we thank you so much for joining us today.